It's Ray. It's your brother K. Judah. Giving now praise to the Most High Yah. And faith in Yahshua HaMashiach. To my Israelite family worldwide. I say peace and blessings. This is the rise of Joseph. Let's go to Genesis 37. The book of Genesis 37. And your brother K. Judah. Go and pick it up at verse 1 through 10. The book of Genesis 37. And your brother K. Judah. Go and pick it up at verse 1 through 10. The book of Genesis chapter 37 and verse 1. And it reads, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob, Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Behai and with the sons of Zelpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So Joseph was a snitch. And we know, don't nobody in the family like no snitch. But Joseph was always telling on his brethren. And they did not like this. Verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Israel, do not do this with your children. Do not love one child more than the other. Love your children the same. Because if you love one more than the other, you are going to cause confusion in your children. So Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other children. Verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved them more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and I also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made witnesses to my sheaves. And his brethren said unto him, Should thou indeed reign over us? Or should thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made witnesses to me. Why eleven? Because Joseph is the twelfth star. Where is Joseph getting this from? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. The book of Revelation. Chapter 12. And let's line this up with a precept. Revelation. Chapter 12. And your brother K. Judah. Go and read verse 1. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And it reads. And there appeared a great one in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Oh. Now I understand why God say line must be upon line. Precept must be upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Because Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 goes with Genesis chapter 37. When Joseph was dreaming a dream. And he said the sun and the moon. And the 11 stars made witnesses to me. We understand that's Revelation 12 verse 1. Now let's go back to Genesis 37 verse 9 again. Because now we got better understanding of what we read. Genesis chapter 37. And your brother K. Judah is going to pick it up at verse 9. The book of Genesis. Chapter 37 And this time Verse 9 through 11 And he reads And he dreamed yet another dream And told it his brethren And said behold I have dreamed a dream more And behold the sun And the moon And the eleven stars made witnesses to me And he told it to his father And to his brethren And his father rebuked him And said unto him 
What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I, the sun, and thy mother, the moon, and thy brethren, the eleven stars, indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? So do you see that his father understood? Shall I, the sun, shall your mother, the moon, and shall your brethren, the eleven stars, come down and bow down ourselves to thee? Did that happen? Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sin. So his father is pondering on the sin of what Joseph dreamed. But hold up. It said that his brothers envied him. Why did they envy him? Because Jacob showed more love to, to Joseph than the other children. And that, that is not something you should do. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs 14. And your brother Kate Judah is only going to read verse 30. And then we're coming right back to Genesis chapter 37. Proverbs chapter 14. And your brother Kate Judah is going to read verse 30. And it reads, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. Let me read that again. A sound heart, meaning your mind. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. But envy the rottenness of the bones. So when you envy somebody, it is rottenness in your bones. And Joseph brothers envy him. Man, they hated this boy. They cannot even speak peacefully unto him because not only was Joseph a snitch his father loved him more than all his other children and that is not something you should do to your babies don't do this now let's go back to Genesis 37 the book of Genesis 37 and this time verse 20 verse 12 through 24 Genesis 37 and this time verse 12 through 24 and he reads and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem and Israel said unto Joseph do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee. See whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks. So Jacob already know Joseph a snitch. He already know that Joseph going to tell him everything he need to know about his brother. Verse 14 again. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee. See where they be well with thy brethren And well with the flocks And bring me word again So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron And he came to Shechem And a certain man found him And behold He was wandering in the field And the man asked him saying What seekest thou? And he said I seek my brethren Tell me I pray thee Where they feed their flocks And the man said They are all departed hence For I heard them say Let's go up to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. These are Hebrew Israelites thinking about slaying their own brother. This is what you call hatred. This is what you call envy. Because not only was Joseph a snitch, his father loved him more. And they wanted to kill their own brother. Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, there's dreamer coming. Come down therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood 
but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brother that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in the pit. So they conspired to kill their own brother. But Reuben said, no, do not shed this blood to deliver Joseph out of the other Israelites' hand. But so Reuben said, man, just cast him in the pit, man, but do not shed blood. They wanted to kill their own brother family. Let that sink in. They wanted to kill their own brother family. Jump down to verse 26 through 34. 26 through 34. And it reads, And Judah said unto his brother, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Median knights merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now I want you to let this sink in. That this is the first time that somebody is being sold as a slave. This is the first time that somebody is being sold as a slave. So the Israelites put their brother in the pit. And some Midianites passed by and lifted him out of the pit and sold this boy to the Ishmaelites who sold him then to the Egyptians. Understand what you're hearing this day. Verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit and behold, Joseph was not in the pit and he rent his clothes and he returned unto his brother and said, The child is not and not whether, whether shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it unto their father and said, This have we found. No known whether it be thy son's coat or no. So now they're going to lie to their daddy. Now I want you to know that God is in heaven watching all this unfold. The Lord is in heaven watching all this unfold. And he have allowed Joseph to be sold. Remember the dream? That they bowed down to Joseph. So in order for God's word to fulfill itself, God have to allow this to transpire what his brothers have done. Because God's word will never return back void. Get that knowledge, knowledge. Verse 33. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his lions and mourned for his son many days. Jump down to verse 36. Verse 36. And it reads, And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Pantur, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So they sold Joseph into Egypt. But remember, Joseph had a dream. The sun, which is his father. The moon, which is his mother. And the 11 stars bowed down to Joseph. So in order for that to take place, what do God have to do? He have to watch from heaven and watch all this unfold before our eyes. Let's go, family, to Genesis 39. And your brother Kate Judah. Go on, pick it up at verse 1 through 14. Genesis 39. And your brother K. Judah is going to pick it up at verse 1 through 14. And it reads, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Pontiac, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thirty. And the Lord was with Joseph. Read that again, King Judah. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. 
and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So God is with this boy, watching him with his eyes. God is with Joseph, watching Joseph with his eyes. Verse three, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hands. And it came to pass from time that he had made him overseer in his house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So do you see that when the Lord is with you, those around you can be blessed. When God is with you, those around you can be blessed. If God permitted so, so because of Joseph God allowed all that the Egyptian had To prosper Understand what you're hearing Verse 6 And he left all that he had In Joseph's hand And he knew not aught he had Save the bread which he did eat And Joseph was a goodly person And way of faith And it came to pass after these things That his master's wife Cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold my master, what a not what is with me in the house. And he have committed all that he have to my hand. There is no greater in the house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How did Joseph know what sin was? But well, there's no law, there's no sin. And sin is transgression of the law. So Joseph knew the law. Get that knowledge, knowledge. Verse 10. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. Man, this woman was persistent trying to get Joseph to lie with her. But this ain't nobody by Hashatan family. This is nobody by Hashatan family. Peep game. Verse 10. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in his hand. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So Joseph was a righteous man. Joseph was not about to commit this wickedness and sin. And you can't make up your own definition of sin. Sin is transgression of the law. So how did Joseph know that this will be great wickedness and sin? Because he knew not to commit adultery. Where we get that from? The law. The law tell us not to commit a daughter. Verse 14 That she called unto the men of her house And spake unto them saying See He have, he have brought in his Hebrew Unto us to mock us He came in unto me to lie with me And I cried with a loud voice So she, she lying on Joseph She the one asked Joseph to lie with her but she lied because he did not do it. These are the tactics of Hashatan. Now jump down to verse 17. Verse 17 through 23. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant was that has brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And they came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. So you mean to tell me you was a king, and you're not going to use no discernment. Now everything that Joseph did prospered for your sake and Joseph's sake. And you're not going to even discern the matter. You're not going to even call Joseph in to talk to him. To see if this thing is true or if it is a lie. But you went off what your wife said. 
Sometimes, family, women can be the destruction of men. Sometimes, family, women can be the destruction of men. Verse 20. And Joseph master took him and put him into the prison and place a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. Now they put Joseph in prison. He did nothing wrong. But a lot of times God will try you, family. God will try your faith, family. God will see if you really about his business. Because we have a lot of people say it. A lot of people say they love God. A lot of people say they'll do anything for God. And when God put it to the test, a lot of people just wither away. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the door of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So even in prison, the Lord allowed Joseph to prosper. Even in prison, the Lord allowed Joseph to prosper. Now let's go family to Genesis chapter 40. Go over one book. We're going to Genesis chapter 40. And your brother K. Judah going to read verse 1 through 23. We're going to Genesis chapter 40. And your brother K. Judah going to read verse 1 through 23. And it reads, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers, against the chief of the butler and against the chief of the baker. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the, certain, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. And they continued a season in war. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream, in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. Verse 7. And he asked Pharaoh's officer that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream. And there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told him his dream to Joseph and said unto him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine there were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou should deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner which thou was his butler. But think on me. Remember what Joseph asked him. Think on me. When it shall be well with thee. And show kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh. And bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also I have done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. So not only was Joseph sold into Egypt. Joseph did nothing wrong. Not only was this Hebrew sold in to Egypt, but he did nothing wrong to be cast into prison. So we got to find out what happened. Now remember, he told him to show kindness. Let Pharaoh know about me. But did he do it? Absolutely not. That's how people are in this world. You do something kind for them, you ask them, man, to remember me, man. They won't do it. That's just the way people are. Verse 16. 
when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uttermost baskets there was all manner of baked meat for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butler's ship again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker, and Joseph had interpreted them. And he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. So do you see that the chief butler was supposed to remember Joseph and let Pharaoh know, hey man, you got a Hebrew down there. He interpreted my dream and he also interpreted the other man's dream. Man, show kindness to this man, man. I don't think he did what your wife say he did, but he did not remember Joseph. He forgot Joseph and went on with his life. That's most people for you. They will forget you and go on with their life. Now let's go family to Genesis 41. Go over one book. Genesis 41. And I'm going to read one through four. Genesis 41. And your brother Kate Judah. Go and read verse one through four. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well of favor kind and fat flesh. And they fed in the middle. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river. Ill favor, lean flesh, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill favor, and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favor and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke and he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, ranking good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh why K. Judah? because God don't deal with nobody but the Israelites if God deal with us all the same why he didn't just talk to Pharaoh himself why he didn't just send an angel to Pharaoh to talk to Pharaoh because God do not deal with us the same Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. And it reads, And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto him. Why? Because God did with the Israelites. Verse 9. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Oh, really? Oh, really? You remember your fault this day. Man, you knew exactly when you were restored to your bishopship. That you knew in your mind that Joseph interpreted that dream for you. And you could have let Pharaoh know right then and there about the Hebrew. But you did not. But now you say you remember your faults. Verse 10 again. Pharaoh was what with his servants and put them in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed the dream in one night. I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man in Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. 
and it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph, and Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me, but God should give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Verse 17, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood up on the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat flesh, and way of favor, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill, favored and lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. So do you see that he's letting Joseph know about the dream? This is what I dreamed, Joseph. I saw seven kind that was well, they was fat flesh. And then I saw seven kind that was lean and looked ill. Jump down to verse 25 to 35. Jump down to verse 25 through 35. And it reads, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind should be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he show it unto Pharaoh. Behold, there came seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall be and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it should be a very, it should be great and very grievous. So he let Pharaoh know, man, God is about to bring seven years of famine. Seven years of famine. Verse 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will surely bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. So Joseph, a wise man, why the Egyptians, cause you got a lot of conscious Negroes talking about the Egyptian was so smart, but why they cannot come up with this that God put into Joseph's mind to let Pharaoh know, you need to store up the food against the seven years of famine. But the Egyptians are so wise over the Israelites. But Joseph is the one who saved their land from famine. Jump down to verse 38. Verse 38. And he reads, And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. There is none discreet and wise as thou art. Not even my people, Joseph. There is none discreet and wise as you, Joseph. Let me say it one more time. There is none discreet and wise as you, Joseph. And what did he get his wisdom from? The man up above. The Most High Yah and his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. So there is none wiser than our power. And he give us that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Verse 40, thou shall be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. But you got to go back to Genesis 37. And you got to go to verse 9. 
when he dreamed the dream and the sun, which is his father, and the moon, which is his mother, and the 11 stars made oddness sense to me. So now we get into the place where God is about to allow his word to be fulfilled. Because not Joseph is the second ruler over all Egypt. Joseph is the second ruler over all Egypt. What is God showing us? That his word never come back void, family. Jump down to verse 46. Verse 46. And he reads, and when and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Hold on, let's do a little math. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. Joseph was sold into Egypt when he was 17. So let's do 17 minus 30. That's 13 years this man was in prison. Let me say that again. Joseph was sold into Egypt at 17. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. That means that Joseph was in prison for 13 years of his life. Joseph was in prison for 13 years of his life. He did not get out of prison until he was 30 years old. Let that sink in, family. Verse 46 again. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Let's go to Genesis 42. Go over to Genesis 42. And your brother K. Judah going to read verse 1 through 6. Genesis 42. And your brother K. Judah is going to read verse 1 through 6. And it reads, Now when Jacob saw that was corn in Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph, ten brethren, went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brother. For he said, let's preventure meets chief befall him. Why did he say that? Because you remember what happened to Joseph. You remember what happened to Joseph. So he said, I'm not sending Benjamin with y'all. Because the last time I sent Joseph after y'all, y'all brought the coat back with blood on it. Understand, family? Verse 5. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. From the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he, and he, it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph brethren came and bowed down. Read that again, K. Judah. Joseph brethren came and bowed down. One more time, K. Judah. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Do you see? That God word never come back void. So when Joseph dreamed that dream in Genesis 37 verse 9, his brothers is bowing down before him in the land of Egypt. Let's go family, back to Genesis 37. Let's go back to Genesis 37. Just so we can make sure we reading this right. Genesis 37 and your brother Kate Judah is going to read verse 5 through 7 and he reads and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brother and they hated him yet the more and he said unto them here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed for behold we were binding sheaves in the field and lo my sheep arose and I also stood upright and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obnoxious to my sheep. Oh, so it did come to pass. Let's go back to Genesis 42. So it did come to pass. I told y'all this Bible is true. This Bible is true. Genesis 42. And your brother K. Judah this time is going to pick it up in verse 7 through 15. 7 through 15. And it reads... 
and Joseph saw his brother, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them, and he said unto them, Which come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Joseph knew his brother, but they knew not him. Why? Because the Egyptians and the Israelites look just alike. And if I go put on some Egyptian clothes and I go run around, nobody not going to know that I'm an Israelite if I have on Egyptian clothes unless it's my family tree. Nobody not going to know, family. Verse 8 again. And Joseph knew his brother, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dream which he dreamed of them and said unto them, Ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. So Joseph know them, but they don't know Joseph. Joseph know his brethren, but they don't know Joseph. Verse 11. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren. The sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the younger is this day with our father, and one is not. See, they thinking Joseph dead. They say one is not because they believe Joseph died. But he didn't die. He's standing right before him. Never judge a book by its cover. He's standing right before him. Never judge a book by its cover. He's standing right before them. Never judge a book by its cover. Verse 14, and Joseph said unto them, that it is, that I spake unto you, saying, ye are spies, hereby ye should be proved by the life of Pharaoh. Ye should not go forth hence, except your younger brother come hither. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21 to 23, and it reads, and they said one to another, we are very guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul. When he besought us and we would not hear, therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. Oh, so when you out here just doing wrong and killing people and shedding blood, that person's blood will be required by God by your hand. You better go ask Cain. Jump down to verse 29 through 38. Verse 29 through 38. And it reads, And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly unto us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father, one is not, and thy youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your household, and be gone, and bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that you are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundle of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my church. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away? All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hands, and I will bring him to do again, to thee again. And he said, My son should not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way into which you go, then shall you bring down my great hairs with sorrow to the grave. So Jacob said, No, you are not taking your brother. You are not taking your brother. So do you see that Joseph is standing before them. Joseph is standing before them. 
but they do not know it's Joseph. Let's go to Genesis 43. Go over one book. Genesis 43. And I got one more scripture after this. Genesis 43. And your brother K. Judah, go and pick it up in verse 1 through 4. And he reads, And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass, when they had eaten up the corn which they had bought out of Egypt. The father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. And Judah spake unto his father, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye should not see my face except your brother be with you. If thou would send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. Jump down to verse 8. Verse, verse 8 through 9. And Judah said unto Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die. But we and thou and also our little ones, I will be surety for him of my hand should I require him if I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee. Then let me bear the blame forever. Jump down to verse 13 through 17. 13 through 17. Take also your brother and arise, go again unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Verse 15. And the men took the present and took the double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin, and when Joseph saw Benjamin, and when Joseph saw Benjamin, his brother, with them, he said to the ruler of his house, bring these men home and slay and make ready. For these men should dine with me at the noon. And the man did as Joseph bade. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Man, Joseph is giving instructions to the Egyptians. Joseph is giving instructions to the Egyptians. Joseph is giving instructions to the Egyptians who's really over Joseph. In their own land, he's ruling over them. Told y'all God is in control. Verse 17, and the man did as Joseph bade, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Jump down to verse 24 through 30. Verse 24 through 30. And they made ready the prison against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the prison, which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. They bowed down again. Verse 27. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant, our father is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obnoxious. They doing it again. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made a haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. So Joseph cried, family. Joseph wept because he said his brethren. Joseph wept because he said his brethren. Not just Benjamin, but all his brethren. But they don't know it's Joseph. Let's go to Genesis 45, and this will be last. Genesis. 45 and your brother K. Judah is going to read verse 1 through 7. Genesis chapter 45 and your brother K. Judah is going to read verse 1 through 7. And it reads, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, causing every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him. While Joseph made himself known unto his brother, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, do my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, 
For God did send me before you to preserve life. Read that again, King Judah. For God did send me before you to preserve life. One more time, King Judah. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there should neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And it reads, And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. So they saw Joseph. He made himself known unto them. And it goes to show you that God is true. God's word never come back void, family. Jump down to verse 25 through 28. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. Joseph is yet alive. And he is the governor of all the land of Egypt. And Jacob heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagon, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. So do you see, Israel, that the Most High God raised up Joseph. Never judge a book by its cover. They hated him. They envied him. They sold him to the Egyptians. And God did all this to use Joseph to deliver his people. God did all this to use Joseph to deliver his people. So almost oh, high Yah, in faith of Yahshua HaMashiach, the mercy that you showed Joseph, can you do it for Israel? The way that you love Joseph, can you do it for Israel? The long suffering that you showed Joseph, can you do it for Israel? We are locked up in prison. Relieve your people. Do it for Israel. Do it for our mothers. Do it for our fathers. Do it for our children and our little ones and our husbands and wives. And your brother Kate Judah want to say Shalom.